This, <laughs> this joke is from Carla. I have to give credit where credit is due. I have to remember it now. What do you call a fish with no eyes? Hey, 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 I'm telling a joke here. What do you, what do you call a fish with no eyes? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, that doesn't even make sense. <laughs> Get it? Get it? It's, Carla told me it was a teacher joke because it has to do with vowels and letters and things like that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, pretty bad. Pretty bad. I, I got two. I got two rim shots. That's good. Okay. All right. Well, we're so glad to have you here today. We'd like to welcome all of our all of our. Um, visitors, all of our guests, all of our members. We're just so excited for you to be here in the house today. And we'd also like to welcome all those who are watching via the um, live streaming on the web. We're so glad that you could join us this morning. If you are here for the first time, we'd love for you to fill out a guest connection card and then get it to, um, you can put it in one of these buckets or you can give it to them at the guest connection center in the back so that we can connect with you. We also have some other things going on. Today is Mission Sunday, and our emphasis is on Haiti and the um, ministry that we're doing in Laganov. The project um, that's going on is, is listed, and more information is given in your bulletin, and it's really exciting. I know we've got a lot of people that are jumping on board and getting excited about um, digging wells and making a difference in Laganov. So... We are, we're working to uh, spread the Great Commission across the world, including those close-by neighbors in Haiti. We are beginning our annual candy drive this month. Uh, the service on October 30th will be um, distributing and giving candy to the kids, and so we want everybody to bring in as much um, candy as you can, and we'll be collecting it. Are we collecting it right over here? Is that correct? I don't and, and down these hallways. Okay, so if you've got candy, try to make sure that it's individually wrapped because we can't give out anything that's not. So got to make sure it's safe. And then um, we can hopefully get enough for that night. And we also have our women's luncheon coming up on October 19th. We talked about it last week. And um, it is an exciting and a wonderful time to get together. The women of all ages come together and enjoy wonderful food wonderful beverages and a wonderful fellowship time together. So I look forward to it and I try to make it whenever I can. So hopefully everybody, every woman in here can make it. Um, if it's $15 for the luncheon to cover the expenses. And then if you are interested, get with Anne Lassane or Mabel Keller. Wave your hands, Anne Lassane. There's Anne and Mabel Keller was, she's probably with the kids. Yeah, I thought I saw her earlier. We also, She's a redhead. You can't miss her. <laughs> we don't have too many of those running around. <laughs> Beautiful red curly hair. Uh, fall jail orientation. Who are our jail ministers in the house? Raise your hand. Okay. If you would like to join this team of people who go into the Clay County Jail and minister, we get certain months at New Beginnings. New Beginnings is in charge of a certain month, and the women's team goes and ministers on the Saturdays of that month, and the men's team goes and ministers. I think it's Tuesday nights. All right. Tuesday nights of that month. And so if you are interested in joining that, there's an orientation. You need to register under our church and then attend the orientation on October 22nd. So um, if you are interested in doing that, there's a sign-up sheet back here at the Welcome Center. Okay? Then we also are in need of volunteers. On Also going on on October 19th, we're uh, going to be helping at the soup kitchen here in Clay County. And um, if you're interested, you can sign up over here too. We've got different sign-up sheets there at the Welcome Center. And it's a nice time, too, to get together. I've, I've gotten to go to that, and when you go, you get to serve food, but you also get to talk with and fellowship with everybody who's coming in, and it's a blessing to them and to us. Tonight, Brittany... Brittany is our fearless leader <laughs> of the walking, running, um, biking club. Is, it, is everybody doing all those different things, or do you have mostly runners? Run, walk, okay. Mostly running and walking going on at her at her run, walk um, life group. And so if you are interested in doing that, I encourage everybody who can to attend. It's great, great exercise and great time together. So um, that's going to be tonight at 5 o'clock. So meet out there at Doctors Lake Drive. And be looking for Brittany and her crew. <laughs> 
We would also like to welcome Pastor Jerry as he brings the word today. We're excited to hear what God is going to speak through you. Thank you, Jessica. Today, uh, Jessica mentioned his Mission Sunday. Uh, we have Dr. Jerry Williamson from Go To Nations with his wife, Roxanne, today. Jerry, come on up for just a few minutes. Jerry's going to greet you and uh, share with you a little missions encouragement this morning. Come on up, Jerry. Uh, we just had the privilege of having some time off that we could uh, this morning be free, so we just swung, kind of swung into this place and uh, wanted to worship with you all this morning. Uh, Roxanne and I were a couple of your missionaries, and uh, you all been supporting us for many, many years. And uh, we want to thank every single one of you that are involved in your, you know, through your missions giving, and uh, uh, just such a blessing this church is. We just love. Pastors Jerry and Susie and, and uh, all of you, we pray for you. And uh, God's doing great things through this church. But I, I just really want to encourage you just for a moment. Uh, Pastor asked me just kind of give a little update. Uh, this is an incredible time to be alive. And uh, it's an exciting time. And if you blink your eye, the world is different because it's changing every day. Uh, the United States has their own challenges. This country is spiritually dying right now. And um, uh, uh, But I just want to tell you that many times when things get desperate, that's when God moves the greatest. And uh, uh, as bad as things are right now, and I can tell you they're bad, uh, the church is in decline, serious decline. And uh, uh, all the indicators are not good. But when... You, you have these things happening, I'm telling you, we may be on the verge of the greatest revival that this country's ever seen. And um, there's, there's, there's key people in, in, uh, in the Christian community starting to speak out now. Some of the things that are happening. And uh, we're not satisfied just gathering a bunch of people in a building. You know, just having, you know, we got more mega ministries in the United States today than we've ever had in our life. And we're in the worst shape. I'm not saying it's the mega ministry's fault. But what I'm telling you, it's not about gathering people in a building. It's about raising up kingdom believers that know who they are in Christ that will take this gospel to the world. And so I believe that uh, it, this is a, a very important hour. Now, I'll just say this real quickly, just kind of give you a little bit of an update. When you look at the world right now, uh, the Lord showed me this in 2005. He says, I want you to start dividing the world up into three categories. One category is the unreached, the people that never heard the gospel yet. There's still 2.7 billion people in the world that's never heard the gospel one time. Not one time. See, every day 150,000 people die. Out of that 150,000, 100,000 of those are not born again. And out of that 100,000 are not born again, 45,000 of them never heard the gospel one time. So we have a lot of places still to go. We have to target the unreached. We have to go places. We've been to the easy places. We're going to have to believe God to get us into the places that are closed, to bring the gospel. There's 16,000 people groups in the world. When Jesus said that we're to take this gospel to every nation, the word nation is ethnos. And that word ethnos means people group. Ethnos is where we get the English word ethnic or ethnic peoples. There's over 16,000 people groups in the world. 7,000 of those are still classified as unreached with the gospel. In other words, there is no replicating church there that is going to have representation in Revelation chapter 7 verse 9 where it says there will be a multitude before the throne of every tribe, tongue, people, and nation. See, that's what Jesus is waiting for right now. This thing, He's waiting patiently. The Father, I should say. Jesus is waiting on the Father. But the Father is waiting patiently for us to bring the gospel into every one of those unreached people groups. But there's another very, very important category, and that is what we call emerging Christian nations. See, there's never been a country like the United States. We brought the gospel to more people than any other nation ever. And these are, and, and the gospel has taken hold. Places like Latin America, the Philippines, even Russia, parts of Asia, the southern half of Africa. Africa will be the most evangelized continent on the face of the earth in the next 20 years. 
See, Africa's not the dark continent anymore. It's Europe. Europe is the dark continent now. And they fall into the third category that we call post-Christian nations. Now, most people are now starting to put the United States into the post-Christian category. We're not at the same place as Europe, but our foot is in the door. We've got to go after, in our missions efforts, we've got to go after all three of those category of people. Now, what I've been doing lately for the last, especially the last four years, I'm spending a lot of my time going into nations right now that are emerging Christian nations. If we're going to get this job done, we've got to raise up the nationals to become a, a mission-sending force in their own right. See, we have countries around the world that if you pulled the American dollar out tomorrow, there wouldn't be anything there. And we've been there 50 years. There's something wrong. There's something wrong when we create dependency in countries when we're not raising up the nationals so they understand the same God that lives in you lives on the inside of them. Right now, we've got 2,000 churches. This is just developing. We've got 2,000 churches right now in Tanzania waiting for us to come and to train them, to raise them up, to be a mighty mission force in the earth. See, there's this type of potential everywhere in these emerging Christian nations. But unless we go and put the tools in their hands and raise them up and let them know, it's not just the Americans, but it's them. The same Holy Ghost is in them, and they can rise up and believe God and use their faith to reach out and be a force in the earth. So we just thank you for... This is what you're... This, you're involved in all of this. Every person coming to Christ is going to your account because you're a part of the giving. Right now, today, after 32 years, we've got... We just topped 22,000 spiritual sons and daughters that are running around somewhere in the world that has been raised up through go-to nations that are now taking the gospel to others. This is... You know, this is an important hour. This is an hour that God is looking for people in the church to rise up and be examples. We need churches like this in America where there is no compromise. There is no compromise. There is no stepping back. It's not just about numbers. It's about the kingdom. Always remember, it's not about building ministry. It's about completing a mission. We have a mission to complete. And I want to thank you not only for Roxanne and I, but I want to thank you for every mission endeavor, every project that you support, and every missionary that you're supporting on a monthly basis. I want to thank you in their behalf. I also want to thank you for all of those that still hadn't heard the gospel. Because if there wasn't people like you that were sending the messenger, then no messenger would ever get to them. So your faithful is changing lives and changing nations. Amen? Amen? Thank you. I, well, first thing, let's get things straight right out of the gate. Good morning. All right. I talked to Daniel Downard yesterday, talking about taking the gospel to unreached people, and Daniel informed me that uh, they have two weeks of school left, and um, they are going back into China. But they're going into an area of China that uh, are unreached, unreached people groups. And uh, uh, tribal, I guess, uh, uh, in, in certain ways. But this area that he's going to has never heard the gospel and uh, he's excited. You know, Daniel spent a year in China with my uh, brother-in-law and sister uh, last year, year before. He came home and uh, married Bianca, and they took off again and uh, went uh, to another school, a mission school. Uh, whose mission school is that, Jessica? Heidi Baker School. Yes, thank you. And um, so now they are finishing up and going into back to China. So it's all good. He's determined that both of them are going to learn the language. 
So, uh, praise God for that. And uh, I know some of that Chinese language too. Huh? I go to the Chinese restaurant. <laughs> you do too, right? Huh? Yeah. Well, I won't even start with the menu, but... Turn your Bibles with me over to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And uh, we just had a baptism, and uh, we praise God for that. We're getting ready to have another baptism here in a few weeks, and we praise God for that. People are being saved. We praise God for that. We had a men's retreat this weekend, and uh, someone in the men's retreat um, was sharing how uh, encouraged they they are because someone was born again on Wednesday night. And uh, to have someone born again on Wednesday night is a big treat these days. When my father and mother were born again, my father said for three years, this was in the mid-50s, for three years in their church, every service, Monday, Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night, people were saved. People were saved. We uh, had a teaching here a couple of Wednesday nights ago, and uh, a woman was in our teaching, and she interrupted me at the end. She says, I want to be saved. Do I have to wait till Sunday? <laughs> I said, well, if, if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and let's try to wait till Sunday. We don't want to do anything very uh, religious on Wednesday. I mean, uh, come on. Now we, we stopped what we were doing and began to celebrate. Everything changed in an instant. Someone wanted to be born again. Amen? I sell, tell you this, if you're born again, it's because you wanted to be born again. Something happened in you, you wanted to be born again, and you couldn't wait. Amen? Something happened in you, you wanted to be born again, there was something going on in you that was drawing you and, and you, you weren't sure that you could wait any longer praise God for his word and his power his spirit drawing us to repentance I want to speak to you today and our, our new converts go back and talk to a us that have been in the faith for a while, about building on a sure foundation. Uh, most of you know that I was a general contractor for many years in Nashville, Tennessee, and one of the things I understand a little bit about is building, and I understand about foundations, and I understand that in Florida, it's hard to get a good foundation because of the soil. It's so sandy, but it's possible. It's possible. And in Florida, if you see a large structure rising up out of the ground, a skyscraper-type structure, you can be sure that there's no sand in their foundation. They're not building on sand. They have went to the rock. They have went to the rock. Let's go to verse 9 and pick up right there. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. For... No other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear. For the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test each one's work, of what sort it is. 
If anyone's work which he has built on endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. You and I, in this passage, are going to learn, and we're going to pull out seven things that we learn in this passage. They are vital to your growth. They are vital to your life. The first thing that we learn is that you are the worker. For we are God's fellow workers. You are the workers. 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 Today that's a nasty word. Worker. Hey, I need some help. Where, do you, where are you going? Right? When we need some help, the workers are few. The Lord says the harvest is large, but the workers are rare. They're few. There's just not many. But the work out here is incredibly large. Pastor, uh, Dr. Jerry just shared with us this work that's out there. I was thinking about going into the mission field myself, but I was thinking that almost everyone was saved. Isn't that what we say or think? Somebody's got it covered. Someone has got it covered. I am just going to R-E-L-A-X. <sighs> right? Right? But the Word says that we are the workers. The second thing, you are God's field. You are God's field. One of the things that I, I know about building is that you build on an empty field. There might be something there, but ultimately it becomes empty where you're getting ready to build. Now, if you're going to patch on to someone else's work or do an addition of something, that's a different story. But we're talking about building a, a new house, building uh, something that God has given us to build. You are going to build your own house. You're building your own house. There's help available and we receive help. Some of this help is good and some of it's bad. We can look throughout the church today and, and, and see very clear that many houses are being built. I'm talking about spiritual houses are being built. I'm talking about your, your, your house and my house. We, the temple of God, where He, the Holy Spirit, lives. I'm not talking about this property here at New Beginnings. I'm talking about something that God declares that we build personally. And we know that some people have been showing up. And obviously somebody else has been getting involved in your house building project. And some is good and some is bad. As a builder, I've built many houses and I can drive up to a house and I'm going to tell you, in just a few minutes. Usually before I even get up the driveway good, I can tell you a lot about that house. And I can usually identify somebody that's built their own house. A house that's been built by someone that doesn't have the skills. 
many people don't know how to set an elevation of a house. They don't. They 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 either have the house too high up and the front porch is too high. The house is setting up too high, or it's setting down too low. But they can't see it in their mind because that isn't their skill. You and I, we start in this house building and we get, begin to build. Some of us, it's obvious that things have went wrong. Some, it's obvious things have went very right. Well, back to God's field. You are God's field. And building on an empty field or an open field. We know here at New Beginnings what true salvation is. I preach it to you all the time. True salvation starts with a broken and a contrite heart. There's no other way. No other way. No other way. We can only be saved because we've heard the word of truth and the word of truth becomes the gospel of our salvation and something happens to us. Our heart begins to break. The word of God says, the word of God is like a hammer hitting a rock. Bam! 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 And it's our heart and our heart's a heart of stone. And that rock, the word of God keeps hitting that rock. Boom! 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 And our heart begins to get stress cracks in it. You can't see it at first. Pride's got everything still covered up. But as the Word of God keeps coming, bam, 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 bam. The next thing we know, our heart has split wide open. And there it lays wide open, ready for that seed in good soil. The field has to be cleared out has to be cleared out. In my projects that I've built, I've had to clear out trees. I've had to clear out buildings. I've had to clear out junk. I go in there with a bulldozer. Wooden, wooden, wooden. Right? (laughs) And it's Katie bar the door. Because we're coming in there with some equipment that can clear out the field. Coming in there to clear it out. The third thing we see in this passage, you are God's building. You are the worker, you're God's field, and you are God's building. The Holy Spirit lives in the believer. uh, Ephesians 1, it says, We first heard the word of truth, it becomes the gospel of our salvation. Having believed, that believed means an eternal belief. That means that nothing will change your mind. Then the Holy Spirit comes and lives in you. The Bible says as a guarantee, a deposit, guarantee in your spirit until the day of redemption. You are God's building. We're His children. We're His building. There's no way around it. No way around it. The Holy Spirit moves into some pretty nasty places. Pretty nasty places. But when we begin to build this house, and we, we accept that it's our responsibility. It's our responsibility. No one else. I'm going to stand before the Lord myself. And I'm not going to stand the Lord and say, well... not my responsibility this one was supposed to do this and that one was supposed to do that if we are the children of God we have this no excuse clause that is part of our life now he the Holy Spirit is living in us the sons of God live with the Spirit of God. 
The Spirit of God bears witness with us. The Spirit of God speaks to us. The Spirit of God teaches us all truth. We're out of excuses. We must build. We must see that we are the worker. The fourth thing we want to look at is Christ. He is the sure foundation. The Apostle Paul's writing here and he says, Hey, you can check out my life. I'm a master builder. Look at my life. I'm a master builder. I'm a, I'm a good example for you. Pay attention to what I'm doing. I'll help you out. But he said, there's only one sure foundation, and that is Christ Jesus. He is our foundation. There are no limits or boundaries in Him. He is the infinite God. There is no change in Him. Never changes. He's immutable. Nothing changes in Him. He has always been and will always be. He has no beginning or end. He's the eternal God. He knows everything. And we say He's omniscient. He's everywhere. We say He's omnipresent. He's all-powerful. We call Him omnipotent. He's the supreme ruler of all things. We call Him the Sovereign Lord. He's the Sovereign One. We preached about His sovereignty a few weeks ago. When I think about the Sovereign Lord, Jesus, my Sovereign Lord, it's exciting. Because He has all power. And He makes things move the way He wants them. At the end of the day, all that's going on around the world, all that's going around the world, the Bible says they're like uh, movable objects. We would say like chess pieces on a chessboard. The sovereign one, he's got a plan, he's got a date. There's a time that he is going to declare that it's over for certain things. Things are going to change. He's going to send his son back to. Catch us away. We call it the rapture of the church. You and I are looking for this. But it's all under the sovereign authority of the Almighty. There's no evil in Jesus. He is holy. Our rock, our foundation, it is sure. Sure. He is just and fair with his dealings. And we will see this as we move on through this passage. The fifth thing we want to look at in this passage he said there's gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble. What is he telling us? He's telling us that you and I choose the material that we're going to build with. We choose the material. He says there's a lot of material out there. Some of it is gold, silver, and precious stones. Others of it is wood, hay, and stubble. But you and I are the ones that choose the material. We have some friends and helpers and churches and other believers. And uh, they teach us and encourage us or discourage us. Some of them bring us good material and some of us bring us bad material. But you and I, it ultimately comes down to us which material we choose. Which material we choose. They have material graders. People that grade materials in the lumber business. 
And as the lumber is coming through the sawmill and through the dryers and through the processing plants, these graders, these people that grade materials, as soon as they can look at that material, they put a mark on that material. And then that mark, if it's a, a one on there, that is superior material. If it's two, that's good material. If it's three, it's not so good. If it's four or a C on it, it's cull. means it doesn't make the grade. Just firewood. It's, it's just not going to make it through the process any farther. But you and I choose what we build with. I'm a Facebooker. Some of you are on my Facebook. Some of you need to be careful what you tell me on your Facebook page. Some of you are building your house with some trash. We live in a world of information. There are children of God that the Spirit of God lives in that are doing things, going places, Allowing material to come into their life, into their house, that is contaminating them. Contaminating the house. If I walk in the house, the this is me. Part of Jerry's life. Enjoy this guy, because this guy is weird, but he's, he's also pretty cool. But he's got some weird ways. I pick up a towel. I don't know if, if I, I might have just used it. But the next thing I'm going to do is sniff it. I'm going to smell every towel I touch. I walk in the house. You know, I don't make a big deal out of it, but my sniffer's working. My mother couldn't smell. I would say, Mom, the trash is stinking. Really? Well, we better take it out. There's some trash. Can you smell? Can you smell where you've been? The effects of what you where you've been. Or what you've allowed in. The building materials. Ma- building material. Building material has an effect on our life. Building material will cause you to look a certain way. Building material will cause you to live a certain way. Building material will cause you to live in a certain place. The building material in you, you're not going to build your house with gold and then hang out with trash. Is that true or not? That is true. That is true. We hang with who we are. So if you're hanging around places that are ungodly, that's because you're building material. Something's wrong in your material. That's the truth. Something's wrong in the material. Let's move on before I have y'all shooting at me. And... Hey, listen. We're here to grow. We're here to grow. We're here to hear the word of truth so that we can receive it and so we don't live this life frustrated. The reason so many children of God are frustrated is they don't know who they are. No one will tell them the truth. Music. Some of it's got a C on it. It's coal. It means it's thrown away. You put a C on something and it's coal. It's a coal material. You throw it away. We would cut up coal material and put it in our wood stove. 
back home. Coal material makes good firewood, but that's all it's good for. Some of this stuff is just flat out coal. The next thing we want to look at in this passage, it says the day will declare it. The day will declare it. What does that mean? The day will declare it. That means someone is going to inspect it. When I built projects, there were inspectors involved. Someone was declaring Someone was making some declarations. They would show up. They would show up with their vehicle, and I could spot their vehicle. Inspectors' vehicles, you know, they're they're always white. Have you ever noticed that? (laughs) Maybe it's preparing us. For the righteous one. (laughs) That's going to be our final inspector. But he's going to show up. The inspector is going to show up. The day is going to declare it. And the inspector is Jesus Christ himself. Jesus Christ himself is going to come and inspect our house. He is going to show up and He is going to inspect the materials. He is going to show up and He is going to inspect where you built this thing. He is going to inspect the field. You and I are the field. You and I are the building. He is going to inspect it all. He will know. He will know. He will know. The day that the field was purchased. He purchased it. He's not walking up on a field that he doesn't own. This inspection is for the the property that he owns. If you belong to him, he owns you. Lock, stock, and barrel. We got to get used to it. We got to accept that this is the truth. We got to accept the truth that we are no longer our own. We are a purchased possession. Bought with a price. Bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ Himself. And when He comes to inspect, He's not going to come shy. He's not going to come up there and uh, say, oh, oh. Boy, I hate to tell you this. No, he's going to come up and be squared off with us. We need to be ready. We need to be ready. The next thing we see is that there is a reward involved. He says that you're going to receive a grade. You're going to receive a grade. He says, If anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, and precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work is going to become clear. For the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire. And that fire is going to test each one's work. He's saying it's going to be revealed our lives, our houses. Our lives are going to be run through the fire. Purification, that's what it's talking about. There's a lot of people, children of God, that still do not have their thinking cap screwed on right. They've got their thinking cap tilted something's not working in their mind their mind hasn't been transformed and they're out there trying to build their own kingdom in Jesus name trying to impress others 
God has told them to do one thing and they're doing another. When he comes to do this inspection, it will be known because it's going to be tested by fire. The fire of purification. And the fire is going to test each one's work, it says. What sort it is. What kind is it? In my life, the Lord came up with a, a problem for me in my mid-twenties. And He called me into the ministry. I thought it was a dirty deal. My dad was a pastor, my grandfather a pastor, my brother a pastor, two uncles a pastor, nephew a pastor. And I was just about pastored out, to tell you the truth. And I didn't like some of the things that I saw. I didn't like the operation of the local church. I didn't like it that there were people in the church that tried to control the church. Lay people trying to control God's work. I, I just, I struggled with all that kind of stuff. So I came up with a plan. I thought it was a pretty good plan. I told the Lord, I said, Hey, you help me in my construction business. Get me good and rich. That's what I meant. I didn't tell him to get me good and rich. I, uh, but my, in my deal, he knew, what I, he knew what I was saying. I said, you help me. I'll send ten in my place. What a deal. How could he pass up such a deal? Huh. I'm helping the kingdom. The problem with that is, I wasn't called to build houses you know, contracting. I wasn't called to be a general contractor. I was a pretty good general contractor. I worked hard at it. But I was a pretty good knucklehead as well. I was pretty hard-headed. I couldn't be led very easily. The will of Jerry dominated his life. Jerry had all things under his control. Under his authority. Jerry was a nice guy. He treated people well, unless they, you know, super deserved it. But Jerry was pretty squared away. But Jerry was building on the sand. Jerry was building his own kingdom. Jerry was determined he was going to do it his way. Jerry would, hey, the Lord blessed me in my construction business, and he did. Or I, I, I made some money. I wouldn't say the Lord blessed me. The Lord allowed me to make some money because the Lord had a big plan because after he watched me work my rear end off for several years and then it all collapsed. He made sure that the big picture painted a, it painted a picture big enough that even a guy like me could, could see it. That I could see myself and myself was revealed to me. But when I made money, I wasn't stingy. I was honest. I would have helped the Lord send ten in my place. The point is, I was rebellious and I was building with the wrong material. Building with the wrong material. He said, you're going to receive a reward. You're going to receive a reward. Or you're going to re receive loss. Verse 14, if anyone's work, which was he has built on it, endures, he will receive a reward. If it endures, what? Now we're talking about when the inspector has already come. He's already he is he is he came to the job. He he has shown up. He is there. You're standing before the final inspector, and he has just run your life, your life's work, through the fire. 
He's just run your life's work. He's just run all of your... All of your life has been run through this fire of purification. And he says, if it lasts or makes it through the fire, you're going to receive a reward. Or you're going to receive a grade. He said, if anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss. Or he's going to receive a no reward. Or little reward. Depending on how big the loss is. But he himself will be saved. Yet it's through the fire. That same purification. When you and I were born again, we were born again through the fire. Through purification. The Holy Spirit when we were broken and contrite and that seed that produces 30, 60, or 100 fold, Jesus said, in the parable of the seed and the sower, when, we, when that seed fell on good soil, it fell on it because there was a place for the seed to go that would produce the fruit. When the Holy Spirit came into my spirit and my spirit and His spirit became one, it was because my spirit was prepared for His spirit. Amen? My spirit had heard the word of truth. The word of truth had become the gospel of my salvation. I had become an eternal believer. There was nothing that's going to change my mind. And He said, I'm coming in. And he came in. He came in. He bought me because of righteousness. Not my righteousness, but the righteousness of the one that purchased me. That's what this fire is all about. It's the fire of righteousness that's going to deal with our works. You might wonder, Pastor, why do we have to... What's this reward thing all about? I mean, what's the point? What's the point? The point is, when Jesus returns and and He catches us up into the heavens with Him, called the rapture of the church, we're going to go to an event called the marriage supper of the Lamb. Then we're going to go to an event called the reward of the believer. That's what this is all about. This is what this is talking about. And then you're going to receive a grade. And let's say the bottom grade is zero and the top grade is ten. You're going to receive a grade. In the military, when I was in the Air Force, I learned about stripes. I learned real quick that when I was walking... Basic training. Yeah. Lackland Air Force Base. San Antonio, Texas. Yeah. I got a piece of advice for you. What? Keep your mouth shut. Don't talk. Unless you're asked, don't talk. That was great advice. Because I had no authority. I didn't have one stripe. I had no authority. This drill instructor was walking through there strutting like a top dog rooster, you know? Crowing and strutting. and We're all standing there. Our knees are shaking. He's telling us how big and bad he is and he's telling us that he doesn't care who our mama is and who our daddy is, that he's our mama. He's telling us all these things. He said, I don't care where you come from. I don't care anything about your life. You belong to me. 
I'm remembering what this man said. Keep your mouth shut. I'm standing there keeping my mouth shut. This man says, this drill instructor says, All right, who wants to clean the brass in the shower? Hands went up everywhere. I just stood there. Who wants to mop the, the floors? Hands went up everywhere. I just stood there. I stood there. I didn't make a peep. These guys were scared to death and they're throwing up their hands. I'll do it, sir. I'll do it, sir. I'll do it, sir. I'll do it, sir. The only job that was left was dusting the blinds. Langford, that'll be your job. Yes, sir. But I knew I had no authority. I knew I had no authority because I had no stripes. But I learned what stripes mean. Three stripes mean more authority than no stripes. Three stripes mean more authority than two stripes or one stripe. Five stripes means more authority than three. And seven stripes means more authority than five. Nine stripes or eight stripes. That's a lot of authority. We learned. The more stripes that walk in the room, the more attention you pay. Because there's more authority in their voice. At this event that Paul is telling us about, where these rewards are going to get, come to us. It's going to establish a grading system. And some of us are going to receive more stripes or more grade than others. And if we go from a zero to a ten, what you want to do in this life, I promise you, is begin to build your house with the right material. Amen? Gold and silver and precious stones. Begin to build your life with something that will last. Don't look for your reward in this life. Look for your reward in heaven. Jesus said this life has rewards that are given to it, but a moth will come in and eat it. A thief will steal it and a rust, rust will destroy it. He said, let your reward be built in heaven where there are no moths, no thieves, and no rust. And let it sit up there and begin to gain and gain and gain and gain. But if our lives are built with wood, hay, and stubble, they are going to burn. They are going to burn when the inspector shows up because he's going to test our life with a fire of purification. We have no choice. There will be men on that day that might have churches of 10,000 looking at a pile of rubble and collecting a big fat zero as their reward Jesus helped us to see it in a, another way they took an offering one day after they took the offering these Pharisees were hanging out over on the side they were bragging one to another how much they had given in the offering Jesus said boys what you talking about oh we were just talking about how much we put in the offering and, uh, boy, we did good. He said, you, you boys are a bunch of knuckleheads. You boys aren't thinking right. He said, you see that little lady over there? She put in more than all of you. He's talking about put together. He said, she dropped in two small coins. But she gave everything she had. The scale just goes. Do you see the picture? I'm not telling you that all you need to drop in is two small coins. What I'm telling you is you need to give your entire life to Him. I'm telling you you need to build with gold, silver, and precious stones. I'm telling you that your life has value. I'm telling you that your future has value. And I'm telling you that your eternal destiny has value. 
I'm telling you that this life that you're living right now is a time of building. I'm telling you that the life that you're living right now is an opportunity for you to get up and do something for the kingdom of God. I'm telling you right now that this is your opportunity to learn of Him and to see what He wants and desire what He wants and begin to live according to what His desire is for you and to begin to build your life with precious stones, gold and silver, things that will last, things that will never be destroyed. And I'm telling you, you listen to me. When we come back and rule and reign with Christ, which the Bible says we will do, the Bible says He is going to come back and put His foot on the Mount of Olives and it's going to split half in two. He is going to declare Himself the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And we are going to be with Him and rule and reign with righteousness for a thousand years. What are you going to do during the Millennial Kingdom? What assignment are you going to have during the Millennial Kingdom? See, in this life, we don't have to struggle about looking important. As a matter of fact, we don't need to think about looking important in this life. We need to think about obedience. We need to think about following the instruction. We need to think about staying on the assignment. We need to think about hearing what He says and getting after it. And don't worry about what others are thinking as far as, oh, I thought you were going to attain much more in this life than what you've done. It doesn't look like you've done much. Just remember about the two small coins. Remember about the assignment. If you heard Him speak to you, and you have, His sheep hear His voice. They follow Him. His sheep hear His voice and they obey Him. That's what that means. His sheep have something to do. We have something to do. Get after it. Just get after it. Jump in there and do it. Don't worry about what everybody else, you know. There are so many Christians that are waiting on this big grandeur a responsibility for the Lord to give them and they spend their entire lives doing squat and you do not listen to me what if you live to be a hundred that's one tenth of a thousand now we know during the millennial kingdom that's a thousand years none of us are going to die during that thousand years we all know that we're going to live that entire thousand years out and we all know that we're going to come and rule and reign with Christ for that thousand years, which means we are going to have assignments, that He is going to give us assignments, and that we are going to rule and reign this world in His righteousness. We know this. So the question is, when that reward comes, what are you looking for? Pastor, it sounds to me like you're all about what you can be. You're all about what you can be. Go back and read the passage. My life is going to be tested with fire. And if my life is built on pride, it's going to burn up. If I'm doing it to impress others, it's going to burn up. Whatever reward we will receive will be to the glory of Jesus Christ and to the power of His church. Praise God. Amen. Whatever reward we receive will be because of, that we have received the word of truth and the word of truth has transformed our mind to the glory of Him that saved us. Amen. Bless His name. There will be no pride left after the fire goes through. We have pride in our life. Hey, that's not going to be good. Not going to be good. But you and I want to come back and rule and reign. We want to come back with as much reward as possible because what that is going to do, that's going to declare with a great, in this reward, through for a thousand years, how we really felt about Him in this life. It's going to keep declaring over and over 
And if you receive a reward of two, it also will keep declaring what you thought of him in this life. If you receive a goose egg, which is no reward, it's going to declare for a thousand years how you really felt about him in this life. He is worthy. He is worthy. He saved us. Would you pass out communion, please? He saved us. Church is running a little long today. Praise God. The word of truth has just been tearing us up. Praise the Lord. The word of truth has been transforming our mind. Praise His name. Do you get it? You get it? You understand? I see heads going like this. I praise God. Praise God. You have communion? They're passing you bread in a cup. Jesus told his disciples to take bread and the cup and remember him. Remember what he did. This message today starts with what he did for us. His body broken for us. That's what the bread declares. In your life, there are many things that have went wrong. Some of you have been abused, spit on, cursed at, lied about, raped, molested. All kinds of things have happened to us. Jesus started out with us all the same. We all came to him the same. All came to us with him, to him the same. Where he he came into our life and he said, "I've taken care of all of your past, all the things that have hurt you, all the things that were done against you. I've taken care of it. I suffered in my own body." And I allowed them to do all these things to me, to degrade me, so that you could be free. And this piece of bread that you're about to eat says to us, "He destroyed the past." It's really hard to build. With gold, silver, and precious stones, and you've got all this wood, hay, and stubble of your past hanging around you every day. It's hard to it's hard to build. He's our foundation. He's our solid rock. Let's let it go. Let's let it go. Are you ready to let it go? Are you ready? We've got the bread, right? He told us to take it and eat it. He told us to let it go. He said, "This is a reminder that it's all gone. We're free. We're free. Our past doesn't control our future. All this junk that's happened in our life is over. We belong to Him." He says, "I've taken care of it." He said, "I don't carry it another day. Don't carry it another moment." Hold up your bread. Pray with me, and we're going to ask Him to bless us, and we're going to pray and ask for forgiveness of any sins in our life before we eat this bread and take this cup. Lord Jesus, 
I thank you that you have died for me and my sins are forgiven. Right now, I ask for forgiveness for any sin in my life. Sins that I know about, I ask for forgiveness. Things in my life, sins that I don't know about, things that I I should have done for your kingdom's sake that I haven't done, I ask for forgiveness. Lord Jesus, I have this bread and I'm going to take and eat this bread remembering that you suffered in your body so that I could be free. And I am declaring today that I am totally free. That my past is over and my future is ahead of me. And I am free from my past. And it's in your name, Lord Jesus, that I take and eat eat together. That's a pretty powerful thing that we just did. What that says, we've all agreed. We're walking out that door today. We don't talk about that trash of our past. It's over. We don't dwell there. We don't live there. We're children of God. We have been purchased from that. Amen? We're free. We're free. We've dropped it. It's over. It's over. It's over. What your parents were, or were not, or any other person in your life, you might have felt like that you didn't get what you needed to excel in this life, it's over. Stop making excuses for something that was part of the devil's work. You belong to Christ. It's over. Amen? Stop talking about it. Stop talking about what your parents did or did not do that hurt you. Or this one that hurt you and that one hurt you. Stop talking about it. The conversation is over. Amen? It's over. There's nothing to talk about. Jesus set us free. Bless His name forever. Take your cup. He says, take this cup, the cup of my blood, and remember me. Remember my blood shed for you. This cup represents His blood shed for us. His blood was shed. He was and is God. And He allowed this crucifixion. He allowed His death. He allowed the suffering and He allowed His blood to pour out of His body so that you and I would have a sacrifice that is eternal and would cleanse us from all of our sins. Not the blood of goats and bulls, but the blood of the precious Son of God. Bless His name forever. Hold up your cup. Lord Jesus, I thank You for Your blood shed for me. And I thank You that my sins are cleansed. I receive right now this cup in honor of you, declaring who you are, our wonderful Savior, the Lamb of God that took the sins of the world. We take and drink in your name. Amen. Stand with me. It's 1018. 1218. 1218, I'm glad you came. You were taught something today that will change the direction of your life. 
You were taught today that this life has meaning in it. You were taught today that you have a responsibility to build your own house. You were taught today that there is coming a day when we're going to meet Jesus and He's going to test our work with purification fire and you're going to receive a reward if your work goes through the fire and makes it. You were taught today that the millennial kingdom, when Jesus comes back and rules for a thousand years, has everything to do with the life that you live today. You were taught today that at the millennial kingdom, at the reward of the believer, you're going to receive a reward. And I tried to share with you that that reward is going to be different levels. And I tried to help you to understand that when you come back and rule and reign with Christ, it doesn't matter what reward that you have. Because the assignment that you receive during the millennial kingdom has everything to do with the level of reward that you receive. In other words, smooth talkers are not going to smooth him at the reward and at the millennial reign. If you receive a three, you're going to receive a three-level work. If you receive a five, you're going to receive a five-level work. If you receive a ten, you're going to receive a ten-level work. And for a thousand years, you can't change a three to a four and a five to a six. Because this is where you build your reward in this life. This is where you build your house. And this is where you choose the material to build that house. Are we straight? This is good stuff. This is good stuff. I wish my preacher would have preached to me like this when I was coming up. They didn't preach to me like this. Maybe they just didn't know. Praise God, we know. We know. And we're excited. Your life has value. And you do have a future. And it's right now. Yes, God. Get after it. Father, I just speak blessings over your children today. God, that we have come together to learn your word. And I thank you for it. God, I ask you to seal this message in their heart. God, I ask you to cause them to think about what they listen to and what they watch and who they hang with. God, I ask you to help them to learn how to evaluate building material and how to have boldness to put a big C and call out things in their life. Get rid of junk. Quit hanging around junky people that's full of junky materials. I pray this in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, let, let your children please you in your sight. I pray. In Jesus' name. Our prayer teams are going to be up here for you. We will pray with you for whatever you need prayer with today. And if you came here in this room today and you do not know Jesus, you don't have peace, you don't know Him. And if He is drawing you today, if there's something in you saying, I must be saved, we're here to minister to you today. We will take the Word of God and help you today to understand the Word of Truth. We'll answer your questions today, but the desire of the Lord God Almighty is that you walk out this door saved and ready to go to work. God bless you. I'll see you Wednesday. I'll provide the sacrifice You provide the Spirit I will open up inside You provide the fire I'll 
I'll provide the sacrifice. You provide the spirit. I will open up inside. Fill me up. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. You provide the fire. Oh, I'll provide the sacrifice. You provide the spirit. And I will open up the sign. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Love of God overflow permeate all my soul. Love of God overflow permeate all my soul. Yeah. 